I haven't done this for years. Coffee in bed. Hello, darling. You join me <clears throat> here at Windy Bum in the kitchen on Saturday afternoon. And um, how am I feeling? You might be wondering. I am still feeling pretty pants. Uh, this morning, I. Um, what did I do? Oh, well, this morning I did something in bed I haven't done for quite a while. Don't panic. Uh, I got up, 10 o'clock, um, had a glass of juice, took some, um, <clears throat> took some pain relief, um, made a cup of coffee, took it back to bed and lounged in bed for an hour. Um, I think I need rest more than anything else. I think I need just rest so that I can get past this long COVID or whatever it is. Uh, today I'm feeling still the same, uh, but with <clears throat> a little bit more in the way of like coldy type symptoms presenting with uh, coughing, spluttering, um, drippy nose. I've sneezed a bit this morning. So anyway, whatever. Um, the one thing about me is that it takes a lot for me to lose my appetite. So, I'm making lunch. And I'm going to make ham and eggs because uh, I've not really been shopping properly and uh, I've got a little bit of leftover ham uh, in the old uh, frigidary doodah. Um, and I have some eggs and I rather like ham and eggs. So, first thing to do uh, is, um, right, this is kind of a cheat of mine. Uh, I'm gonna make some fried potatoes to go with my ham and eggs, but rather than boiling the egg, uh, the, boiling the eggs, okay now, rather than boiling the um, potatoes in a separate, in a separate saucepan, um, I'm going to boil them in the wok. It's just one less thing to wash up in it. So I'm also desperately trying to download, I've edited um, Monday's lunch video, it's 70 minutes long and I'm having the normal battle with the, with the bloody iPad. It's, oh it really is an absolute nightmare. It's just not got enough memory capacity. Oh. I've talked about it many times before. And I just can't wait until, um, until I can replace that and get rid of that problem because it's just, um, you know, if I've not got too much on there and it's just a short video, 15, 20 minutes, like the Daily Diary video, which I uploaded earlier, not a problem at all. But a 70 minute lunch video, big problem. To the extent that I may not even be able to do it today. <coughs> um, there's nothing else that I can really delete off the iPad. Right, let's have a look at these potatoes. So I've got, these are new potatoes, I think, and they're rolling all over the place. My surfaces are clean, I don't care, and they're gonna be washed. Okay, I shall cleft them in twain, thus, one, two, three, four, five, six, This one, I'll do a three way. Um, that'll be enough actually. We'll put this one back in the bridge.
then pop these into the wok. Remember the rule, darlings, I keep telling you, but either you don't listen or you keep forgetting, or you don't care. If it grows under the ground, then you put it into cold water and bring the water to the boil. If it grows above ground, straight into boiling water. Oh, it doesn't look so much now they're in there. I will do that other one. Telling myself I don't have to eat it, but you know I will. There we go. Pop those in, and then we just bang the heat on. Straight up to number nine. <clears throat> and the video has that I'm trying to export is coming towards the end of the exporting thing and in a few seconds it will tell me that there's not enough room and I'm gonna have to um, uh, I'm gonna have to uh, I'm try and think of how the hell else I can free up any room I assume it's gonna do that let's just wait and see Oh, I desperately need to have a tidy up as well. Um, dear me. Obviously, things happening, not feeling so well. <sighs> things are not as tidy as they might be. Just pop a bit more water in there. Now normally, if I was using a saucepan, this would be on number five or number six to get a simmer. But because this is such a wide open thing, it needs number nine to simmer. Let's have a look. Unable to export. There is not enough space to export this movie. Oh, bloody hell. Right, I'll try and do something about that, I suppose. Okay, well, the news is good. Uh, I finally managed to export that um, that lunch video and it's now currently uploading. So that should be good to go for the 1919 slot this very evening. Uh, the potatoes are beginning to come to a simmer. I need to do some washing up, um, tidying up generally. Oh, the other bit of good news is uh, I had a good old chat with uh, Captain Mustard of the Project Nigel channel and the doings of Mustard and Boaty and Mustard and Boaty do cars and all of that. Um, and um, obviously I began to the yard on Monday and uh, Dick had dum -dum. I've, I've had the price on Dick had dum -dum. And the good news is it's not as bad as I feared it might be. So I think I can actually afford to pay for it which means that I will be coming home in Dicker Dum Dum on Monday, my very rare Rover 45 V6 Connoisseur, which is arguably one of the most famous cars on YouTube. Um, I think, well, I don't think it's even arguable. Um, that car has been reviewed by and featured on more uh, videos on more channels than any other car, I think. Everybody's had a, had a bloody go with it. It's a right tart of a car. The number of asses that car has seen on its, uh, on its driver's seat. Uh, not since I've owned it. Not since I've owned it. The only, um, the only other person who's driven it since I owned it is Captain Mustard. And we share everything. Uh, not his wife, obviously. That would be wrong. Oh, I'll tell you what, while the potatoes are doing, um, I will answer a question. I'll do it on a video rather than in comments. Um, a few people, uh, it's been asked and answered before, but obviously, you know, new people subscribe to the channel on an ongoing basis. Uh, and I've had a little bit of an influx over the last week, thanks to the, uh, the lovely Sean giving me um, uh, a shout out very kindly. Um, and people have been asking, where did the name Boaty come from? So I'll, I'll stick it on another video for you and quickly explain just while the potatoes are doing. Um, <clears throat> oh, gosh, right. 
Okay, it started with um, an unexpected blind date. Uh, it was um, a day or two before my 30th birthday. Um, I was, uh, I used to do all of my own legal work when I had the car showrooms. Um, I hired, um, I hired a brief once, I hired a, a barrister once, and he did a, I thought he did a particularly lazy job, and I thought, well, I could do better than that, why am I paying, why am I paying this guy? So from then on, I did all of my own advocacy. Um, I did study the law for three years, but to be honest, um, when it comes to standing up on your hind legs and arguing in court, I don't think that academic learning comes into it. I think um, charisma and personality are the, are the orders of the day. That's what can really hold sway. So I did all of my own legal work, and um, because of my business model, we used to spend a reasonable amount of time in, uh, in court. And I was doing some research online, uh, on an online law forum. And I was just got chatting to, um, to a lady who owned two law firms in America, in Illinois, Chicago to be precise. One of which was a general law firm, and the other uh, was um, like their equivalent of the CSA, chasing errant fathers for child support. And we ended up chatting a little bit more personally, and it went off the forum and onto um, uh, onto uh, you know messaging and whatnot. And um, my birthday was mentioned, and. She said, uh, what are you doing for your birthday? I said, nothing, as usual, normal day, go to work, whatever. Um, she said, uh, come out here, I'll buy you lunch. So I thought, okay, why not? So I booked a flight, flew out to Chicago. Um, she was a, I mean, she was a millionaire, um, very glamorous, blonde thing. Picked me up from O'Hare Airport in, uh, it was a January day, um, cold but sunny. Um, Chicago does get cold in winter. Um, picked me up in a brand new convertible and off we went for lunch. And lunch went rather well, so we had dinner and dinner went rather well, so I moved in. And um, she had been playing me in the car, guy I'd never heard of. Not so big over here, big in the States, guy called Jimmy Buffett. And um, her favourite track, which became my favourite track, was Boat Drinks. So, roll on a bit, and um, eBay in the UK, there didn't used to be a specific dedicated United Kingdom eBay site. Um, if you listed on eBay way, way back in the day, uh, then you listed on eBay.com. eBay.co.uk didn't exist. But it was about to exist, and they were setting up a power seller program for businesses um, when they set up .co.uk. And, they, uh, and you know, there was a, a group of businesses that kind of formed the nucleus of the beginning, of which one of my businesses was one. And eBay looked after us very well, um, and um, amongst other things, we had a dedicated forum just for our own use. And on that forum, you were known by your eBay username. And my eBay username for when eBay.co.uk uh, was introduced was Boat Drinks, after what had become this favorite song of mine. And that was all you were known by on the forum. So all of the other business owners, um, you didn't know what their real names were, and they didn't know what my real name was. All they knew was that I was boat drinks. So we referred to each other by corruptions uh, of the eBay username. And that was how everybody got nicknames. And boat drinks became Boaty. And we became a really tight, close-knit community. This is before the days of social media, or certainly before the days that I was involved in social media. So all of the people that I was hanging out with online, they called me Boaty. And I called them whatever they were, Fudgy, Astro, um, Jalpy, um, Trops, um, so on and so on and so on. Now, 
Scroll forward again six or seven years to, to 2008. I joined Facebook, uh, as did many others of my eBay community. Now, initially on Facebook, um, my initial friends base were all of my eBay people. So, of course, they carried on calling me Boaty, even though, obviously, they knew what my real name was. But we all called each other by our nicknames. And then as my other friends, or new friends, or old friends, or whatever, began to join Facebook, they saw that I was just being called Boaty all the time. So they started doing it too. They assumed it was my nickname, and they just didn't know. So from then on, I've just always been Boaty. And that was that. So there you go. That's the story of where Boaty came from. The other story to tell you about eBay is that I should not be an unsuccessful old man living in poverty in a damp cottage in the arse end of nowhere. I should be a very rich man because myself and my colleague Richard, we started the world's first online auction website. We started it in January of 1995, where it's the site that went on to become eBay didn't start until September 1995. We were first, but we did it for Classic and Sports Cars which is what our business was. And we were very clever to do that. Um, where we weren't clever was in realising that what worked for classic and sports cars would work for everything else as well. If we had realised that, we would have opened the website out and we would have become eBay. Um, now, as it happened, it didn't matter for Richard because... He went on and became incredibly rich and successful anyway, do, doing something else. Whereas um, <laughs> I've ended up not being rich and successful. Admittedly, a divorce didn't help. But there you go, that's my other dinner party story. And um, when I tell people that, you can see in their eyes that they don't actually believe it. But happily, I've got um, print adverts from the time of when we launched showing the dates. So I can prove that it's actually true. It's not a little bit of Billy Bullshine, as they say, from old Boaty here. So there you go. I hope that answers the Boaty question. Right, I better go and see how my video is getting on and then do some washing up. Ah, well. <clears throat> so sorry. Uh, things are going splendidly. The um, the lunch video has uploaded and will be going out at 19.19 tonight, which means that by the time you watch this, you will have already seen it, or at the very least had the opportunity to see it and decided not to bother. And also, I've done the washing up, so that's good. Now then, let's get some lunch before we need to get off to work. I really don't want to go to work tonight, I really don't. Where I'd like to go tonight would be to bed. I would love to go to bed and just um, relax. Uh, actually, I'd quite like to <laughs> binge watch a, a load more of Sean's videos. I haven't quite worked through them. I keep sticking to... What have I spelt on the floor that's making my slippers sticky? I don't know. Anyway, we've turned the heat down on this. We'll drain the water. Do you want to have a look? There you go. Can you see? Drain the swamp, as the Donald would say. You've got to love the Donald. It's been quite interesting of late, the old uh, US presidential thing, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> that report saying that Joe Biden is a forgetful old sadhu basically hasn't got it. An elderly man, well-meaning but with memory problems. Gosh. So it looks like, we'll just add a bit of um, stir-fry oil. I've left a little bit of water in to boil off. Because this being uh, an electric hub, it's going to take a while for the heat to get down to the setting where I put it. We'll just season that a bit. Now 
No salt, because I very, very rarely cook with salt. And it's been that way for more years than I can remember. Let's take a spousal spanking tool. Take that up to heat for a while, let that, <clears throat> let that ring subdue itself to the level where I put it rather than being on like a number nine level of heat. Yeah, so it looks like the US presidential election race is going to come down to a choice of a 77 year old man or an 81 year old man. I've got my fingers crossed for Trump, you know. <clears throat> I'm sure I would feel very differently if I was still living in America, but as I've said many, many times, as far as I was concerned, a Trump presidency was the third series of faulty towers that we were robbed of. Bless him. Get the hammer out the fridge. And next job is I will go and separate the eggs because I only eat the yolk because I'm not an animal. If you ever need to separate your eggs, by the way, and I don't mean separate them from each other, I mean separate the yolk from the albumen, you can use one of these. The easiest way, to be perfectly honest, Use your hands, just break the egg into your hand and allow the albumin to trickle through the gaps in your fingers whilst remaining hold of the egg. The other thing that you can do is to take a plastic bottle with, uh, with a wide neck, like that one there, an empty one, break the eggs into a shallow bowl and if you just squeeze the bottle, place it by the yolk and release your grip on the bottle. It will just suck the yolk in. That was such a clever thing. And just drop that in there. Nice and easy. One more for luck. Excellent. Or should that be excellent? Sorry. Well, that's completely ruined the day. Just had a phone call from the restaurant. They've got to the restaurant and the wheels have been stolen off Melanie Minge bag. <sighs> Back you know. So on that basis, I'm gonna cut this video short because really not in the mood now. <sighs> Bollocks, that's gonna be a pain in the ass. Oh. Nothing like news like that to steal your appetite. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right. I'll catch you later. Right, let's go and see just how bad it is.
think there's a possibility that my, I might have been the victim of a not very funny practical joke. Okay, so it was indeed some it was indeed Sam Rett's uh, little joke. And um, I had a, I totally 100% believed it at first. And then just as I've gone through, had lunch, um, uh, had a bath and I'm thinking and I'm thinking and it's becoming less and less likely. And I'm starting to think this, this could actually be a wind up. So I, I mean, uh, Right, it was a genuine thing, by the way. I'm not making any of this up. He did ring me up when he got to the restaurant and asked me if I'd taken the, the tires off my car. Now, I knew that he meant wheels um, and, and said that they were missing. And, oh, you know, whether it's just because I was feeling a bit poorly or whatever, and whatever, I just, I believed it. But I started to believe it less and less. And I'm thinking, and on the way over, I thought, right, if this is a wind-up, I'm having the bastard. I'm probably going to have him. So, um, as soon as I got, you know, when I got here, and that was genuine that I was filming, um, except that as I drove in, I could see that at least one wheel was on. So, but then I, I did that little bit of filming, and then I stormed into the restaurant, and I bawled him out, and I told him that... Um, uh, that the car had been reported to the police and to the insurance, that somebody was um, uh, had just left Scotland and was coming straight down with some wheels for it because um, obviously the wheels on that, are, they're called 11s and they're the only wheels, because this car has been fit with the bigger brakes, those are the only wheels that will fit around the brakes. So it's not as if any, just any old wheels could go on it. I told him all of that and I swore at him and said, he, He's no idea how much trouble it's caused me and other people and how much money this is going to cost. And then I stormed out, shoved everybody out the way, stormed out and said, I'm going home, he's a fucking prick. And Ram came running out after me, Ram opened the car door, put his hand on my arm and said, look, just calm down, calm down, what happened? And uh, I, t I told him and I said, oh, I'm not... Blah, blah. And um, then I spent about five minutes uh, having a fake phone conversation with various people talking about insurance companies and police and whatnot and he's looking more and more worried and then i stormed back into the restaurant gave him the phone and said uh, my partner needs to uh, speak to you no no i cannot i cannot and then i couldn't uh, and then he took the phone and he said there's no phone call here and at that point i just completely lost the plot and just started laughing but um so there you go, darlings. <laughs> Panic over. Minge bag is alive and well. And still has all four wheels. So <clears throat> I'm sorry I didn't finish the the, the the lunch video off in the way that I intended. Um, so um, I will end this video with a picture of the lunch as it turned out. And... Um, I'm not feeling as bad as I was, bizarrely. I, I guess a, a bit of adrenaline has worked wonders with the old lurgy. So, there you go. It's, where are we now? It must be 20 past five, something like that. And uh, that's going to be it for this, for this daily diary, my lovelies. Thank you for watching. Take great care of yourselves. Much love from me. And I will see you next time. So, pachu and indeed, bosh.